The DJI Osmo Pocket 3 is a fantastic little camera, but there are a few settings I recommend changing to make sure you get the best experience possible when using it and get the highest quality videos and images. Today, I am going to go through them settings, explain what they do and why you should change them. Let's jump right in. Now, the first thing you will want to do is connect your Pocket 3 to the DJI Memo app and make sure you have downloaded the latest firmware version to it. That's because some of the settings we will be going over in today's video were only recently added with that latest firmware update. Now, the first setting you will want to change on the Pocket 3 is the video mode resolution. By default, these are set to the lowest resolution available, which is 1080p but we want the highest quality possible from this camera. So in video mode, swipe up from the bottom of the screen and then you can change the resolution across the top to 4K. Now something that's important to note is that each independent video mode has its own resolution settings. So if you press the mode button on the bottom left of the screen and now go across to low light mode, you will see this is also set to 1080p. So again, you need to swipe up from the bottom of the screen and change this to 4K. Going across to slow motion mode, again, I recommend setting this to 4K to get the highest quality video possible. However, something to be aware of is if you're using 4K resolution in slow motion mode, you will only be able to get 120 FPS. This will allow you to slow your footage down by around four times. However, if you would like your footage to be even slower, you can change the resolution to 1080p, and now you will get access to 240 FPS, which will allow you to slow your footage down by around eight times. Personally, I like to have the highest quality video possible, so I keep the resolution set to 4K, and I find 120 FPS to be slow enough. Lastly, we need to update the resolution for hyperlapse, time-lapse, and motion-lapse mode. So when you change into time-lapse mode, if you swipe up from the bottom of the screen and go across to hyperlapse mode, you will see it is set to 1080p. So again, tap on the top right of the screen, and then change this to 4K. Again, we need to go across and do this for time-lapse mode, and lastly, we need to swipe across and update this for motion lapse mode. Now, after using the Pocket 3 for the past couple of months, I have found it has a tendency to slightly overexpose its footage. And this means if you are recording on a bright sunny day, you could get areas of your sky which are completely overexposed and blown out. Now, to fix this, I recommend changing a setting called exposure compensation. Now, to access this setting, you want to swipe from right to left on the screen and then press the Pro button to reveal all the settings available within this menu. Then you want to tap the Exposure setting. Now, the Exposure Compensation setting is on the left side of the screen, and this allows you to tell the Pocket 3 you don't quite agree with the exposure it has automatically chosen for a given situation. So if you increase this value, it will brighten the image up, and if you decrease this value, it will darken an image down. Now, I recommend changing this to negative 0.3, so you get a slightly darker image, and this now means you don't run the risk of getting them overexposed or blown out areas on your footage. Now the Pocket 3 comes with a feature called Glamour Effects, which allows you to do things like thin or smooth your face, whiten your teeth, make your eyes bigger, etc. But I highly recommend you turn this feature off as it can make your face look cartoony and really diminishes the overall quality of the footage from the Pocket 3. Now to turn off Glamour Effects, again you want to swipe from right to left on the screen, and then tap the Glamour Effects option until it says off. Now alongside these settings, something I highly recommend including in your finished Pocket 3 videos is music and sound effects. But where can you find high quality music and sound effects that are safe to use when uploading your clips to social media platforms? Well, I personally use and highly recommend the massive library provided by today's video sponsor, Epidemic Sound for all my projects. And they have recently launched an exciting new plugin for Premiere Pro that can massively speed up your editing workflow. With this grind-breaking integration, you can now seamlessly access their full catalog of music and sound effects, including being able to search, preview, and add their music and sound effects clips to your timeline all within Premiere Pro. Even more exciting is the built-in sound match tool, which when you select a selection of your timeline, uses AI technology to analyze your video 
and instantly recommends music that perfectly complements your visuals. So if you're looking for music and sound effects that you can use in your projects, then why not give Epidemic Sound a try? And if you use the link in the description down below, you will get a free trial. And you can use this to experience firsthand how their music and sound effects can transform your videos and sequences into cinematic masterpieces. Now the next setting I recommend you change in the Pocket 3 is the image adjustment setting. I have found the footage that comes from the Pocket 3 by default is slightly too sharp. It has an over sharpened digital look to it. So to get much more natural looking footage, you want to swipe from right to left on the screen, scroll down to the image adjustment options and then press custom. Now on the left side of the screen, you will see a setting where you can adjust the sharpness. And I recommend reducing this to negative two to remove some of that sharpening being applied to the footage and get a much more natural look from the Pocket 3. Changing now to Photo Mode by pressing the Mode button on the bottom left of the screen and then swiping across to Photo Mode, if you swipe from right to left on the screen to bring up the settings, one of the options you will want to change is the Format setting. Now in here you have two options, JPEG and JPEG and RAW. Now using the JPEG only format will get you smaller images that you can use straight from the camera. However, compared to JPEG, Raw images contain a wider dynamic range and have more data in them, which gives you much more flexibility when editing your images in a photo editor. You will have much more flexibility to recover highlights and shadows of your images. And therefore, using the raw format will result in you getting better looking images from the Pocket 3 after you have edited them in your image editor. So for that reason, I recommend you change the setting to JPEG and RAW to be able to get access to them raw images. Now just quickly, if you are getting value from this video, please let me know by giving me the thumbs up and clicking that like button down below. And if you love all things Pocket 3, but also action cameras, drones, gimbals and more, and want to learn about the best settings to get up and running quickly, along with tips and tricks to help you get more cinematic videos and better looking images with your gear, then please consider subscribing by clicking that subscribe button down below. And when you're down there, be sure to check the notification bell so that you will be alerted when my new videos are released. It would be greatly appreciated. Now, when you are in any of the video modes, if you swipe from right to left on the screen, you will see this small microphone icon. Now, when you press this, you can change some of the settings for the internal microphones on the Pocket 3. And one of the options I recommend turning on is the wind noise reduction option. And when this is turned on, the Pocket 3 will reduce wind noises in the audio captured by them internal microphones to make it sound cleaner. Now, when you swipe down from the top of the screen on the Pocket 3, you will bring up the control menu. And if you press the icon with the sun, you can adjust the screen brightness. Now, I highly recommend reducing this down to around 50%. I have found this is more than bright enough to see the screen clearly when outdoors, but by reducing it to 50%, you will be able to record longer before running out of battery because the Pocket 3 will be more efficient. Now, one of the features I highly recommend turning on in this control menu is a feature called FT Selfie. And you can turn it on by pressing this icon here until it turns yellow. By default, if you want the Pocket 3 to start tracking you in selfie mode, every time you rotate the gimbal round, you have to double tap on yourself on the screen. But with FT Selfie turned on, any time the gimbal rotates round into selfie mode, the camera will automatically start tracking you. So you don't need to double tap the screen every single time and this is super handy for vlogging. Now, another setting I recommend changing in this menu is the gimbal rotation speed, and this can change how quickly the gimbal will keep up with your movements as you're panning or tilting the Pocket 3. Now, you can access this setting by pressing on the icon of a person running, and then I recommend setting this to slow. I find by default the gimbal moves too fast to be able to get nice, slow cinematic movement with the Pocket 3. But by changing this down to slow, the gimbal just moves that little bit slower and this allows you to get more controlled and smoother movements with the Pocket 3. Now, if you press the settings icon on the bottom left of the screen, you will get taken into the settings menu. And in here, there are a few settings I recommend you change. The first is gimbal startup direction, which by default is set to forwards. Now, what this means is whenever you turn the Pocket 3 on, the gimbal will always turn to face forwards. But I recommend changing this to last setting. Now, this means if you were vlogging to the Pocket 3 with the gimbal in selfie mode and you turned it off, and then after a few seconds, you want to turn it back on to start vlogging again, instead of that gimbal facing the wrong way from you, it will now rotate back into the mode it was whenever you turned it off, which is selfie mode, 
and you can continue vlogging to it. This is super useful. Now if you scroll down in this menu, the next option I recommend you change is the rotate screen to power off setting. Now by default this is set to 2 seconds and what this means is if you rotate the screen to start capturing vertical footage, if you don't hit that continue button within 2 seconds, the Pocket 3 will turn off. And this has caught me out so many times where I've rotated the screen to start capturing vertical footage, I haven't hit that continue button quick enough and the Pocket 3 has turned off. And this can be quite annoying. So what you want to do is you want to go into this setting and change this to never. Now when you rotate the screen to start capturing vertical footage, the Pocket 3 won't turn off. And when you do want to turn the Pocket 3 off, all you have to do is press and hold on the record button and the Pocket 3 will now turn off. Now the next option you want to check within the settings menu is the slider control option. And you want to make sure this is set to zoom. If this is set to gimbal, when you push the joystick up on the Pocket 3, instead of the gimbal moving up, the camera will zoom in. And when you push the joystick down, instead of the gimbal rotating down, the camera will zoom out. And that's because the slider, which is this little icon on the right side of the screen, is what is set to control the gimbal. So to move the gimbal in this mode, you have to press on that slider and then slide your finger upwards to move the gimbal upwards or slide your finger downwards to move your gimbal downwards. I don't really like this. I would rather that that was set to control the zoom and I had full control of the gimbal with the joystick. Therefore, you want to set slider control to zoom and now you will be able to fully control the movement of the gimbal with the joystick and that slider on the right side of the screen is what you will use to zoom in or out. The next setting I recommend turning off is the selfie flip setting. When this is turned on and the gimbal is rotated into selfie mode, it will actually mirror your image. And what this means is any text in the image, maybe you have text in your t-shirt or there's text in the background, will be flipped the wrong way round, which will just confuse anyone watching your footage. So to prevent this, turn off the selfie flip option. Now the next feature within this menu that I highly recommend you turn on is the built-in mic audio backup feature. Now when this is turned on, if you're using the Mic 2 to capture audio, the audio being captured from the Mic 2 is what's being stored to the video file on the Pocket 3. But at the same time, the Pocket 3 will save an independent audio file capturing the audio from the internal microphones. Now this is super useful for redundancy. Let's say you're using the Mic 2 and you accidentally hit the mute button without realizing it, or the Mic 2 falls off. This means the audio being captured from the Mic 2 to the video file is no longer going to be usable. But you could actually swap that out with the independent audio file using the internal microphones in the Pocket 3, and this will now make your footage usable again. Now the next setting I recommend you change is the joystick speed. If you're trying to do a nice slow cinematic pan movement using the joystick to move the gimbal, or maybe you're trying to move the gimbal from the sky to the horizon, you will find it just moves too fast when using that joystick. But if you go to the settings menu, scroll down to the joystick speed setting, on the right side of the screen, you can actually slow down the speed of that gimbal. And I recommend reducing this to one. Now, when you move the joystick, you will find that the gimbal moves much slower, and this will allow you to be able to get nice, slow cinematic movements using that joystick. One of the most useful features you can turn on in the Pocket 3, and I recommend turning on straight away, is the grid option. Now you will find this under the reference line setting, and then you will find the option to turn on grid. Now when you go back to the camera preview, you will see you have a grid overlaid over the camera preview. And this is super useful for being able to keep your subjects centered, especially as you move around them, and also being able to frame your shots using things like the rule of thirds. Now, if you're using the DJI Mic 2, one of the most important settings you will want to change is the transmitter game, which adjusts how loud the audio being captured by the DJI Mic 2 is. Now, the way you set this is first attach the Mic 2 to the position you're going to wear it when vlogging. Then look at the audio meter on the top of the Pocket 3 screen. As you talk, this should be hitting around the 75% mark. If instead the audio meter is barely moving at all, then swipe from right to left on the Pocket 3 screen and then press this small DJI Mic 2 icon. Then you want to press the transmitter one gain setting and you want to slowly increase the gain, referencing back to the main screen as you talk until that audio meter is hitting the 75% mark. If on the other hand, as you talk, the audio meter is 
always in the red, this is too loud. So you will want to go back to the transmitter gain setting and slowly decrease the gain until that audio meter is hitting around that 75% mark as you talk. Now if you are using the DJI Mic 2, another setting I highly recommend you turn on is a setting called Audio to Video Sync, which you can access by swiping down from the top of the Pocket 3 screen, pressing the Settings button, tapping into the Wireless Mic settings, and then scrolling down until you see Audio to Video Sync. Now with this setting turned on, whenever you start a recording on the Pocket 3, the DJI Mic 2 will automatically start storing an internal backup. Now this is super useful because if you're using the Mic 2 and you walk too far away from the Pocket 3, you might start to get transmission cutouts, and this will result in the audio cutting out on your video file. However, the audio stored to the internal storage on the Mic 2 won't have these transmission cutouts. So again, you can just use this audio file to replace the video audio file and now you will have perfect sounding audio. Another really nice feature about audio to video sync is that when you stop a recording on the Pocket 3, the internal recording on the Mic 2 will also stop. So the audio file will be the same size as the video file. And this means you don't need to do a sync clap to sync the audio files up. Another really nice feature to turn on in the wireless mic settings is the 32-bit float option. Now what this does is increases the audio dynamic range. So just like if you have a camera with more video dynamic range, you can capture more highlights and shadows, well that is kind of like audio dynamic range. Normally if you capture audio that is really really loud, it can become clipped or distorted. But the great thing about turning on 32-bit float, which if you remember gives you more available audio levels in your recording, is that if you do capture audio that is too loud, such as a scream, or too low, such as a whisper, then you are able to correct this in post without the audio becoming distorted because you are recording with that 32-bit float setting turned on. Now, if you have played back some of your footage on the Pocket 3, you might not realize that you can actually play them back with audio. And that is because by default, the media library playback is muted. So to be able to turn on the audio so you can hear your clips, check that you sounded okay when you were vlogging, you want to swipe from left to right on the screen to bring up the media library, and then tap the mute icon on the top right of the screen. Now a volume slider will appear on the screen, and you simply want to slide this all the way up to the right, and now your playback will have audio, so you will be able to hear what you have recorded. So those are 20 settings I recommend changing on the Pocket 3 to make sure you get the best possible experience when using this little camera. Now, if you want to learn even more about the Pocket 3, then here is a video going over 100 tips, tricks, and hidden features that I highly recommend checking out by clicking up here or using the link in the description down below.